Hi, I'm Angie and um, yeah, a couple of weeks ago um, I published a video about how I make chocolate during summer and today I want to talk about um, yeah, shipping chocolate during summer. A bunch of you um, asked about it um, that I should make and record a video about it, so here we go. I would say that I'm going quite deep into this topic because there's a lot to say. Like the last couple of years I made a bunch of experiences, um, good and bad, and um, yeah, I just want to share with you what I've learned in the last couple of years. Three things to say uh, before I even start with giving any tips or advice. Um, I live in the US. Um, you might live in a different country, so not everything might apply to you. Shipping during summer is really expensive, so you need to figure out on your own if it's even worth it to do it, or if you just say, hey, I'm not shipping during summer. But what you could do is add a handling fee on your website, um, just to um, yeah, recover the cost of all the shipping materials that you will need. And the third point is uh, that my method of um, yeah, shipping chocolate during summer is not 100% guaranteed that your chocolate will arrive in perfect condition, meaning unmelted. There are so many different variants that you don't have under your control. Just two examples. Your carrier is delaying your shipment for only one day, maybe two. This could already mean the death of your chocolate, absolutely not your fault, but well, your chocolate will arrive melted. Second example. Your chocolate arrives in perfect condition at the mailbox or on the porch of your customer. And then it sits there eight hours in the bright sunlight. Those were only two examples, but they all happened to me before. So what I just want to say is not everything is under your control. And I just thought of another thing. Never underestimate how hot a car um, or um, yeah, a post office truck can get because they are not insulated and they don't have AC. So it's getting really brutally hot in there. And this means that I'm um, already using the methods I'm talking about in a second, um, uh, already starting at 20 degrees Celsius either where I live or where the destination is. So I'm already starting at 20 degrees Celsius because you never know how hot your truck is. Let's talk a little bit more about practical things. So the very first thing that I do when I receive an order or want to ship chocolate, I check the weather forecast for uh, my city and the city of destination. So let's say your chocolate is two days in transit, then I check the weather forecast for um, yeah, two days later at destination. I don't ship when the temperatures are above 30 degrees Celsius. Like I'm canceling the order, I give a full refund, um, that's it. I'm just not feeling comfortable uh, with shipping above 30 degrees Celsius. And 30 degrees Celsius is not a number I made up in my mind. So I sent a couple of different boxes with chocolate um, to a friend's family in Arizona. And I think one year there was a heat wave and I shipped it because I really wanted to see if it would make it. And it didn't. Like everything was completely melted. Um, but a couple of weeks later or maybe even a year later, I did another couple of tests um, and shipped it over. And I think it was around 30 degrees Celsius and all of the chocolate made it, um, the ice pack was not warm anymore. So it was exactly where I needed it to be. And that's where the 30 degrees Celsius are coming from. So I really would um, yeah, urge you to, to uh, make some tests on your own. And just to make it more real, like yesterday I had to cancel three orders. Uh, one was going to Texas, the other one to Ohio, and the third one I just can't remember right now. Um, but I really had to cancel it because um, there's a heat wave in Ohio and Texas is always hot during summer. So um, yeah, I just can't ship there. Which is frustrating, but that's a reality. <laughs> the next important thing is your carrier. You could choose between, I mean, I don't know um, what you can choose in your country, but at least here in the US, you could pick FedEx, UPS, um, but I'm choosing USPS, Priority Mail, because I found them most reliable, which is so important during summer. Um, so they ship between one and three days. Um, and I'm paying between like $7 and $15 for shipping. If my customer really, really needs and wants their chocolate, but it's above uh, 30 degrees Celsius at destination, then I might consider expediting it. But expediting means that it's crazy expensive and most customers are not willing to pay uh, above $20 for shipping on a 10 bucks order. So that rarely happens. I never ship over the weekend. Your chocolate will be long in transit and this can kill your chocolate. So um, I'm shipping between Monday and Wednesday for sure, sometimes also Thursday and Friday, um, depending on the temperature at destination and also how long your chocolate or my chocolate will be in transit. I bring my chocolate as late as possible to the post office. You can ask your, um, yeah, your local post office and just ask them uh, when the cutoff time is um, and yeah, I'll bring it maybe 30 minutes before that. Let's talk about the products I'm using. Oh, actually, I have all the links uh, in the description below. So if you want to look something up, 
check it out. So between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius, I will use these. Those are regular um, gel packs. I have them in uh, three ounces and six ounces. Um, so if it's not like crazy hot, I will use these. If it's hotter than 25 degrees Celsius, I will for sure ship with these ones here. They're called nice packs um, and those are dry ice sheets. Yeah, and here you can see me like cutting them into different sizes. Once you've cut them all, uh, yeah, you just have to massage them for a little bit. So, um, yeah, they soak the water better in and it goes just a little bit quicker for maybe, yeah, 30, 60 seconds or so. And then you let them sit for another couple of minutes and then you can pat them dry and put them into your freezer. The dry ice pack as well as the gel pack needs to be frozen 24 hours prior um, your shipment. Once you've frozen them for 24 hours um, and your shipment is ready to go, um, I like to put uh, those ice packs or the dry ice packs into um, like those sandwich baggies um, because I know here they say they're leak proofed. They're not. Like I've had instances where these were leaking um, and that's just a really really good prevention for any gross stuff um, getting onto your chocolate um, and it also helps with uh, condensation. Next thing, depending on the size of my chocolate, I will either use like uh, insulated bubble wrap um, on a roll or if I have um, a smaller order I like to use these mailers. They're just super handy. So that was the more practical advice um, but I also want to mention something else. Um, I'm struggling with shipping chocolate in summer since I've started making chocolate, since I've started selling my chocolate. Um, it's never been easy because on the very rare occasion where my chocolate is arriving melted and I would say this happens two to three times a year so not very often but it still happens um, I'm feeling very down and frustrated I really care deeply that my customers uh, receive their chocolate in perfect condition you know I sell all of those pretty chocolate and I put in so much effort and work and I just want um, my customers to be happy with it or maybe if it's not your customer, then your family member or your friend, right? I guess what I want to say, and I'm also saying this to myself, um, we can't control every step of the way. Believe me, I've tried it. It doesn't work. We can't control everything. We don't have everything under control. Um, don't beat yourself up. These things happen. Yes, it's frustrating. It's okay that it's frustrating, um, but these things happen. If your chocolate arrives melted and you've tried everything to prevent it, um, then this is not the end of the world. Most of my customers, I would say 90 to 95 percent, are super understandable, they're awesome and they're very forgiving. Um, but yeah, sure, there are those 5 to 10 percent um, that are really mad and angry. But you know, they have other issues in their life. It's probably not you, it is not your chocolate. If someone is getting crazy mad because of melted chocolate, then they have other issues. So it's not you. Maybe this last part was completely um, yeah, unnecessary and um, not helpful to you, um, but I'm someone um, who's beating themselves up for like tiny little things. And um, if I feel that way, I think that someone out there is also feeling that way. So I just thought um, I share it with you as well. Okay, that's all. Have a good one. Bye.